Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to go through a pretty cool new analytical database I found um, called Star Rocks. Um, so this is a Linux Foundation project, so actually not Apache Foundation for once. Um, and it's an open source, so anyone can download it, get started totally free. Um, and it's just a really, really fast analytics database. Um, so it is really optimized for extremely fast and cost efficient query performance um, in almost any situation. Um, that's because it is a massively parallel processing database. Um, so it's built to power sub second queries at scale and it has an elegant design. Um, it's got a rich set of features. You got a fully vectorized engine so it can you know, handle vectors really well, newly designed cost based optimizer um, and also intelligent materialized views. Um, and these features allow it to deliver a query speed far exceeding traditional databases, especially when it comes to multi-table joins. Um, and this really allows you to, you know, ingest data at super high speed, update, delete in real time. Um, and then, you know, it's got the classic support for all your major BI tools. Um, it doesn't, but also doesn't really rely on external components. It has an integrated data analytics platform as well. Um, so you can actually do some of your analytics right uh, on the database, um, which is you know, always a nice little feature to have. Um, so what I want to do today um, is, you know, best way to learn about something, and you know, obviously I can talk to you about the statistics and all the great features of it, is to actually get into the, uh, you know, one of the, a particular use case here. Um, so what we are going to do is go into the Star Rocks GitHub, so you can see here, Star Rocks. Um, and we are going to do a little retail e-commerce funnel analysis demo. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do here is ingest a really, really large data set, million members, 87 million record database, all run it locally on Docker. So make sure you have Docker desktop, and I'll show you how to set it all up. Um, and you know we're going to kind of simulate almost a production use case of a, a Star Rocks database, you know, processing and analyzing really massive amounts of data at a really fast pace, really, uh, and also at a very low performance cost. Um, so now I'm gonna switch it over into VS Code and we'll get started setting this all up. So first thing you wanna do is you're gonna open up your demo master uh, folder um, and code editor your choice. Don't really need to do this step, but just so you have kind of everything available to you. Um, and then what you're seeing happen here is me run, go navigate into your uh, the iceberg folder. So go and CD into documentation samples and then CD into iceberg and then run this command. Docker compose up dash 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 wait uh, and then dash dash wait timeout 60. And you can see what's happening right now. And the reason why I'm kind of pulling in the middle of this is this will take a, a you know a few minutes to run is spinning up mini IO database, spinning up star rocks uh, and also spinning up a spark iceberg instance. So you have everything you need to do to, you know, actually do some analytics on your local machine. You have mini IOs, you know, kind of a file, local file storage, iceberg as your data lake house. And then you have star rocks to uh, manage and query uh, and also act as a database as well. Um, so really cool kind of way to just set up a local analytics environment on your own machine, uh, just outside of this particular demo. Uh, you know, just very easy way to, to get started running locally. You don't wanna have to pay for or use a cloud database. So then once it's all said and done, you should have a local iceberg, or look, if you open up Docker desktop, which you have to be running, um, you'll have Star Rocks, REST, Spark, Iceberg, MC, Star Rocks, um, and Mini IO. So now we have our local environment set up. Um, I got a message saying my Spark uh, BE was unhealthy, or my Spark Rocks BE is unhealthy, but if you just double check in uh, Docker, it'll tell you if it actually is unhealthy or not. And then now that we're done with that, what we can do is go into our UI. Um, so bring open a browser window here, and then we can create a bucket for Hootie and upload some files. So to do that, we're gonna go to localhost 9000. So 9001 uh, defaulted to here, but we actually want to go to 9000. Okay, so it's going to make us go to 9000. So this is that mini IO uh, object store that we created. Um, I think I'm just port forwarding here. So admin password login. Awesome. And so now we have just a basic warehouse bucket that's right here. Um, and what we need to do for the purposes of this demo is create the bucket hootie test. So what we'll do here is go to buckets, create a bucket, call it hootie test. 
test. And then just leave all these features off for now. Create a bucket. Um, and then you know, within warehouse, we need to upload two parquet files. So what we're going to do, um, and where is that? So if I go into a warehouse um, and then upload here. So what we need to do first actually is upload some parquet files. So um, what I'm doing is just downloading them from a star, or from this GitHub repo right now. So the link within the repo if you want to go download them. Um, and this is user behavior sample. So if we go to downloads, I have item sample data parquet and then another one that's downloading right now that will be called uh, item sample data. And so this is that sample data that we'll be using. So give it a sec to uh, finish downloading and then I'll upload it. Done downloading, so go to upload, upload file, and then go to downloads, and go here. So item sample one parquet file, and then get our second parquet file uploaded. Um, upload, upload file, and get our second parquet file. Where is it? Here is your behavior sample data, much beefier, 1.25 gigabytes. So like I said, we're we're using real data here, um, just so you can see that. Awesome. So now we got our sample data uploaded. We are ready to go. Um, and then so what we're going to do next is we actually need to run some Spark Scala code to insert some data. Um, so switch back over into our desktop. So what we're going to need to do is go into our Spark Hootie container. Um, so if we go up. Find. So minor hiccup, actually not doing the iceberg uh, setup. So everything I'm doing, all good, except go back, run the exact same Docker compose command, but do it from your uh, data lakehouse folder. So I accidentally got started on the iceberg version of it. Um, so there's a couple different kind of quick starts here. I'm supposed to be doing the data lake house, which is why Hootie is involved. So if you're looking for that kind of discontinuity, that is why there. So go into data lake house and then run that same command. Uh, make sure you stop your existing doc container. So stop those um, and then Docker compose up. Um, and now this will start up the proper things. So everything I'm going to kind of go right back into just SSH, what I was doing before, which was trying to SSH into the Spark Hootie container that we're about to spin up. Um, so I'll meet you back there um, within Docker Desktop. Awesome. So now everything is stood up. Go, make sure you go into Mini IO, upload those files again, because it's not going to preserve, because this is a separate Mini IO database that's spinning up. Um, but then meet me in, in Docker Desktop. So I just want to kind of come back in here. But you should, in Docker Desktop now, see this data lake house set up right now, which is seven containers. Um, mini IO, Star Rocks, who um, in Spark Hootie there. Um, so one second. So now what you're going to want to do is open up this Spark Hootie container here, um, and then exec in there. And then what I'm going to do is run these commands from the uh, GitHub doc. So here, what we're doing is basically just removing the older Hootie 0.11 library and telling it to use the newer Hootie uh, 0.14 library. Um, and so this is also just going to set some Spark uh, defaults as well for us and just run the following to set up some additional Spark configurations just for the purpose of this. Not really important, just driver memory and, and specific versions of a bundle of packages we'll need. Then once we're in Scala, uh, what we'll do is again, just copy another code block um, and then insert it in here. So what you're seeing is just importing a bunch of different packages, reading in our sample data and then creating a data, uh, data table within uh, Spark. So if I go over here, you can just kind of see the file because I didn't really show it via terminal, but you can see importing the packages, reading in a Parquet file, creating a database name, user behavior, uh, setting a base path, and then writing it in this format, bulk insert um, of just that user uh, behavior data. And then next, we're gonna run a similar uh, line, which is going to just be doing the same, but for our item sample data. So I'll wait for this to finish running, uh, run the second one, and then I'll meet you back at the next step. So once we're done adding all of our data, we will quit the scale interpreter and run this MySQL command await. So you're actually going to go out to your data lakehouse star rocks container, um, if you want, and then 
use this command. So MySQL port or dash p 9030 dash h, uh, then this uh, IP address, user root, um, prompt star rocks. And what this is going to do is have your star rocks uh, analytical database connect to your hoodie on S3 so that we can read those files um, that we uploaded those S3 buckets and then brought it into Hootie. Um, and Hootie is similar to Iceberg. It's a you know, similar data lake platform where you, know, you can read buckets and kind of query from them. So we're still using Starrox as the query engine, but uh, we are using Hootie as the data lake house here. Um, and so what we'll do now that we're connected um, is through Starrox, we're going to create an external catalog, um, Hootie catalog with a few different parameters. So just basically linking um, our Starrox database to our Hootie MySQL database. So selecting count from item. So let's see how many um, count or what we have. So we just have, okay, so we have here uh, 3,962,559 rows. So I would say that has been properly uploaded. So now that everything's verified, we know we have all our data in here. Select uh, from user count, select count from item. Uh, the next step we are going to take is going to be actually doing some fun stuff with the data. Um, so within this, it kind of just give you an idea of what data we're uh, querying is. This is a data user behavior set. So randomly selected million users recording their actions on Taobao, which is a software platform um, for buying things uh, from, for a period from November 25th to December 3rd. Um, and so it has five dimensions. You got user ID, item ID, category ID, behavior type, and timestamp. So I think you can get what everything one of those uh, is aside from behavior type. And that just is, means things like, hey, they took an action. They bought something. That would be an A behavior type. Um, so now I want to really illustrate Starrock's best qualities, which are doing really, really fast queries on this data. So as you know, we have you know, millions of data points here. So it might take a while, right? Well, what we're going to do here is try to understand the e-commerce conversion funnel. Um, so just walk through this query real quick. We're going to select users uh, that bought something within a certain time period based on you know uh, how many users actually came into the site versus how many actually bought something um, and viewed a, sorry, viewed a product versus buying it. So here, what we'll do is now we actually have our retention ratio. So what this retention ratio is, you notice this just queried, again, millions of data points in 1.85 seconds to get me a response, and not only queried them, but performed relatively complex computations here. This isn't just a simple select statement. This is actually uh, querying and selecting based off a couple different parameters, grouping, and it's all done in 1.85 seconds. So very cool stuff. Um, and what these two levels are, the retention ratio, so what this means, this level one, is that 34% of users who viewed a product added it to their cart, and only 23% of users who actually added it to their cart then proceeded it to place an order. Um, so really interesting. You can see here, you know, the kind of progression of people through the site um, buying products, and you know, this is something e-commerce companies would use to you know try and tell, hey, what are our most popular products? Maybe we need to figure out, uh, make the advertising or the user purchasing experience better. Um, now, a next thing we might want to look at is looking at the different item IDs, the top 10 products with the worst conversion rate from page views to buy. Um, so figure out, hey, what are the lowest, crappiest products that we're selling? Um, and, you know, worst conversion rate of page views, people looked at it, maybe they found it interesting, but they only looked at it to laugh at it. And so here, what this will do is give us the retention ratio of several of these products for people who looked at it, which means they clicked on the product, but they didn't buy it or add to their part, cart. And you can see here, we're going to the sub percentile level for a lot of these, uh, percentile level for a lot of these, you know, 10th of a percent, um, less than 10th of a percent. Uh, yeah, so we're going out to the thousands of place, um, which is, you know, just very, very small amount of people that are actually look, buying that uh, product. And that's also only people that actually clicked on the product. So really terrible uh, retention ratios there. Um, now, let's try and figure out where users are dropping off. You know, where are people coming to the site? What's making them actually leave the site? Um, so let's look at, let's collect some user paths and let's see based off of, um, you know, what, again, just looking at all of our users over a certain period of time. And for this particular item, 59883, let's look at the average path of actions that each user took before they left the site. 
Um, and as we can see here, once we run, so this will take three point or two point eight six seconds. Um, you can see here uh, we have PV, which is a page view. So page view, page view, page view, page view, page view, page. And so we can see a lot of these users are just clicking through different pages. They're not actually bringing anything into Clart. They're just looking, clicking around. So that could be a reason uh, for it. You know, just some people are just coming on the site to window shop and these products are really attention grabbing, but they don't necessarily convert into people buying the product. Um, and you can also, another cool kind of uh, thing about Star, Star Rocks is that you can put explain in front of the query and this will actually uh, explain the uh, query that you're executing. So if I, wait, that's not what I wanna do. Um, so if I go and put, just, um, yeah, so shocker, that didn't work. That was just nonsense. But if I put explain and then use the same query, this should tell me information about what my query is actually doing. And there we go. So here, you know, this is a, quite a different output where it shows each step that this query is actually taking. So it's partitioning, aggregating the data, um, so if you're really looking and you know trying to understand, hey, how is data? You know, how can I understand how data is structured, how those queries are actually in process, and you want to optimize it? Great way to kind of look at all the different steps that were put into your query, break it down, and actually showing how those queries are interpreted within the database. Um, and so that is pretty much all I had for you today. Um, really, just thought this was a cool tool really, really lightning fast queries. So great if you're trying to do analytics work or really any kind of work where you need to do querying of lot really large data sets. Um, so I hope you've kind of enjoyed this intro to Star Rocks. Um, and let me know if you like this content, if you want to see more of it in the future, or if you have any other tools you want me to check out. Uh, but have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.